Okay, so I want to do a quick video going over the beginning of our linear data structures. That's going to be linked list. There's going to be two more with stacks and queues that'll come after this. This is going to be the longest one of the three as the other two are more of an extension of this one. But I want to try and cover this one in a little bit more detail as for this class I generally like it the most as it's something that's designed to be extensible while the other ones are more designed for application. So I'm going to cover this one in terms of extension and then the other ones I'll probably share some actual application of what you can do with them. But for now let's just go ahead and get into it. So without further ado, give me one moment and here we go. Okay. So linked list. What are they? Now, see we have our typical graph here. We have our data structures. It's going to be on the non-primitive linear side right here, along with our array, stack, queue, and there's only a few other ones, but these are the important ones. But what are they? So as spaces, linked list is a linear abstract data structure. Now this abstract part here is very important as it defines why we care about linked lists in general. So by nature, they're very versatile as there are no restrictions as opposed to other ones. There's no program principle like LIFO, or FIFO, they're not contiguous. I'll explain what LIFO and FIFO are in future videos. But just know that with linked lists, they are completely open to design however you want them to be used, whether they're going to be in a single direction, multi directional, um, if you want to add data in the middle, at the end. The beginning as long as they are linked together in some facet in a linear fashion then you have a linked list they're pretty arbitrary by design now by abstract it just means it can be whatever you want so with an array a lot of time you'll see like integer 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 all in a row with linked list if you want to be a pair of integers with a character and continue that on linked together in a linear way, you can do that. It can be whatever you want. If you want to throw in a, a string in there too, you can do that. Just whatever you want. It is completely abstract. It is completely up to the design of what you want it to be. And that's where you get more of a versatile aspect than something like vectors, as they kind of approach the same problem, but vectors are a little bit more well-defined and strict and the programming paradigm that C++ handles, you can you can add abstraction to vectors, but it's a little bit more of a roundabout way. With linked list, it is open to the design that you want to implement. They are a little bit more arbitrary to set up and a little bit more complicated, but once you have it implemented, they're pretty portable and honestly, they're really nice. So, they're very, very frequently used for linking data together via dynamic memory, so there's going to be a lot of pointers here. Now, the data is stored non-contiguously in this facet because, again, you just have pointers pointing to something else, so there's no restriction, like arrays will start at some memory address. Maybe it starts at memory address 800, and everything's going to be in order, like 804 will be the next integer, 808, 812, so on and so forth, and you're going to continue on because it's contiguous data. And same thing for vectors, though those are a little bit more dynamic in approach by their design. Linked list, it can be at memory address 800, the next one could be at 1000, the next one could be at 912. It doesn't matter. It is wherever it is defined in memory, and you have pointers that will link it together. So that's what I mean by dynamic memory here. Now, one of the other aspects here is that linked list, by nature, are very extendable. So you can add as much functionality and flavor to it as you want. However, you can also add as much restriction as you want. And when we do that, we can apply LIFO and FIFO principles. So that'll be last in, first out. First in, first out. Again, I'll kind of explain that in more detail for stacks and queues because that's how we create them. We make a linked list and we apply a restriction on how we handle the data. And that restrictive data type is now a new data structure. How do they work? So this is going to be more of a, I guess, high look at them, but we'll go with the more basic aspect. So linked lists will typically have two defined attributes. 
this is the head and the tail and not all of them will use a tail pretty much every single one will use a head and this essentially is the start and the end of our lists and every single one of them are constructed of various nodes which will contain some data and pointers to other nodes I'll explain that in just a second but essentially we have some head which is a node it's going to point to another node that node will point to another node so on and so forth until eventually maybe you point to a tail if your linked list has a tail the tail is used to kind of indicate that there is an endpoint so if you want to start at the end of your linked list you'd have a tail if you don't care about that you can omit that and it'll save you a little bit of data a little bit of memory and space but honestly it's not too bad to have them now let me my nodes in our case they're gonna be C++ classes now you might see these as structs in other courses and other things online you know struct essentially is more of a C paradigm they're interchangeable but since we're doing C++ we're going to use a C++ approach and we're just going to use classes so what we have is at least one data attribute and at least one pointer so the most minimal one that we have is a singly linked list all they have are next pointers and then we have doubly linked lists that also have next and previous pointers now if you look at the I have them kind of color code here the orange is indicating the nodes down here and then the cyan indicates our next pointers that the arrows point to the right and we also have magenta previous which are all of our pointers pointing to the left so if you look on the left side this is our singly linked list and this on the right is our doubly linked list so single all we have are next pointer so we have some integer of 34 it's going to be in a node it is our head you can see its actual memory address here and then we have our tail which contains 56 so these are two different nodes they are linked together by this next pointer and then since our class essentially consists of this node which contains a pointer and a index for our integer and then we also have another one here right there that points to null data so it's not actually pointing to anything quite yet it still has a pointer but that pointer doesn't have a defined destination essentially so these are our two kind of classes put together here two instances there's two objects essentially so there's our head our tail 34.56 and then on the doubly linked list it's kind of the same structure but every single one of these is going to have our data attribute a previous pointer and a next pointer same thing this 56 has its next its previous pointer here and its next pointer here and then again head and tail being the same so if one has a single direction it's going to have better memory efficiency because it only has one pointer per object whereas our doubly linked list is going to have more data just because it has to have two pointers per object as opposed to one so one has a bit more versatility and approach with a doubly linked list by having both pointers you have both directions it's going to take up a larger memory footprint as well so again you can add as much functionality or you can add some restriction whatever best suits your needs. Again, linked lists are by nature just extendable to whatever you need. And then again, this is kind of going where that data attribute, every single one has to have at least one, but like I mentioned earlier, you can add as much as you want. So if I want to use integers along with floats, I could do that. If I want to use a integer along with a string, I could do that. Just whatever you want. Now, they can be any type of data, but our main point here is that they need to be consistent. So we're creating multiple instances of our class. So it's always going to be consistent as long as you use the same nodes. But it's going to be a similar approach to arrays and vectors. Again, we have, say, a linked list of integers will be comparable to an array of integers. It's just going to be dynamic memory linked them all together. So we could interchange them to a degree. Now, for the head and tail, I only have linked lists of two elements here. So you're gonna see head and tail consistently here, but the head basically just means it's the first element in our list. The tail means it's the last one. Now, if we had say a list of 34 
I'll do a singly link list over here. 34, point of 56, and then we add another one, point of maybe 72, and this is going to point to null. Then this is our head, and 72 is now our tail. 56 is still just a node. Um, everything at the end of the day in your link list is going to be a node. You're just going to have two specific ones that are indicated by head and tail, whether that's the first one or the last one, essentially. So, again, tail, we can omit that if we don't want it. Save a little bit of space, lose a little bit of functionality, but if you don't need it, then hey, might as well save the time and effort. Now, how do we interface with them? It's really pretty straightforward uh, at its basis. Again, we can add as much functionality as we want to, and you're going to see that. But we start with an empty list, so there's nothing in it. We just have maybe some null pointer, essentially. The head and the tail are going to be set to null. Nothing that actually exists inside of it. But eventually, we're going to start adding nodes at the beginning of the list for the head. And we add something to the end, it's going to be the tail. And as we add nodes, it's going to continuously update the head and the tail if we adjust the beginning and the end. But let's take a look at instance if we want to do just off the top of my head, we do some empty list. So now let's just make a list. So this will be our class here. And then it's just got head and tail set to null. Now we add something. Let's just add a um let's just add 34. So the same thing we did previously. This is now our head and also our tail. And it's pointing to some null data. Alright. And then I think the last one had 56. So let's add that to the end. Now it's pointing to null. But since this is a new end, tail gets adjusted. So now our head is 34, our tail is 56. And in this case, let's uh, let's add something at the beginning. Let's add a uh, 12. So now head gets readjusted here. So 12 is our head, 34 is just a node in the middle, and then 56 is our tail. So this would be kind of a very, very basic interface here. We just add data into our list, making sure that we point our new node to its appropriate one. And if we have double linked list, then we need to take care of our previous pointers as well as our next pointers. But essentially, they're very, very straightforward now. Obviously, we might have some new functionality that may be added in the middle. So let's just add a 42 here. That'd be possible too. Perfectly fine to add some in the middle. Um, that is one of the beauties of linked list is they don't have a principle like LIFO and FIFO. So you can do whatever you want with them. That's pretty nice. Now, I do have a good bit of pieces of code to kind of go over here, but I am going to have a video going over actual code separate, but I just kind of want to do a kind of a brief breakdown. Again, this is going to be a fairly longer video, so if you want to just dedicate a time to watch the code itself, you can do that. I'll have a link in the top right for a card that'll point to it, so give that a look if you want. But for now, let's just go ahead and get into this. So, we start with our node class. And these are the building blocks for all of our data structures. You're going to see the same node class in Stacks and Queues as well, so just be prepared for that. But essentially what we have is this, this node class, public data. There's no private because there's really no need for it. But we have data type of integer, and we have a pointer here for our next. So this is going to be a singly linked list. Now we have our default constructor here. Uh, data is going to be zero. And it's not going to be pointing to anything, so it's been pointing to null, sorry. And then we have another one that if we want to actually specify the data in the node, we can do that and just say we have like node 7. It would create an integer of 7 and still a null pointer because we're adding a new null. But not a big deal there. So then we have our linked list class. Now, for our overall linked list class, we're going to have three private variables along with several public functions, and you can add as many new public functions as you want, but let's take a look at these three private variables. So again, we are doing a singly linked list, but we're also doing a linked list that has a tail. So we do have the default head, we have a tail, and then we also have a length. Now the length is not necessary at all, but it gives us some 
way to keep track of how long our list is, basically how many elements are in the list. And that's always super helpful. Now it's not gonna be the size of the list because maybe you have multiple data types and you need to keep track of the size of those data types and size of it. So maybe you had say two integers per node, you need to keep track of how large those are. So I think each node would be about eight bytes, not counting the pointers. So if you wanted to have another private variable that dealt with the actual size as opposed to the length, you could do that. Again, they're just as extensible as you want to be. Then we also have our constructor, which is just going to be setting the head to a null pointer, tail to a null pointer, and the length of zero. We have our basic deconstructor. And then we have an insert at start, insert in, insert at, that's going to be an index, remove from start, remove from end, and then remove from a specific index. And then we have a humble display. Now, let's take a look at those. So we have insert start. One of the most simple methods is just insert at the very beginning, readjust our head. Not a big deal. So if the list is empty, set head and tail to a new node. If it's not empty, we point our new node to the head and set the head to our new node. So since we're creating a new node here, we increase the length because we're inserting. We're going to do a check to see if it's empty. If it is, so essentially if the head is a null pointer, then we're just going to set the head and tail to our node and return. Good to go, it's inserted in. We have the head and tail adjusted and we're good. However, if it's not, then we need to make sure we point the new node to the head and then set head to our new node. So it's gonna adjust it however we want. And then we have a very, very similar approach for starting at the end. So do the same as previous by checking that this is empty. Also, also make sure to adjust your length. Check if it's empty, if it's not, then we just need to adjust our tail. That's it. These two, very, very simple. Just adjusting head and tail, length, and that's it. Inserting at, you can tell this is a little bit more involved. So it's a more complex method. We're gonna take a look at this in two steps. Um, this is just a full block of code here, but let's take a look at the pre-processing aspect of it. So before we start adjusting the length list at all, we can make this a little bit easier on ourselves by first checking to see if the index is in the bounds of the list. So here we do a check to see if the index is gonna be greater than our length or if the index is less than zero. So if that is basically says, hey, are you trying to insert data outside of the scope of your linked list? So if I only had three elements in it and I want to insert at index 12, obviously I can't do that. So I'm gonna let the user know, hey, you." Are out of bounds and I'm going to return. So basically it's not going to do anything. And then meanwhile here we can also do a check for if the index is zero we can just call our insert start and return be good to go. Same thing if we have indexes equal to length that's inserting at the end so we call that function and then return. So that's just kind of a little bit of nicety there to save ourselves some processing time because this is a bit more involved so if we have an easier way to do what we want We'll just take that path. No big deal. But for the insertion, this we need to take an index value from the user. So create a new node, update our length, and then we need to initialize a node at current. So this is the actual current node that we're working with. It's going to be set to head. And then we are going to loop through our actual list to find the actual index. We can create a temporary node. Set our current node to point to our new node, and then set our new node to point to our temporary node. Essentially, what we're doing there is say it's um, so we have 34 and 56, and I want to insert the node uh, 78 at index one, so that'd be basically here. What I'd want to do is loop through index minus one time. So I'm gonna go to zero, and then I would do current next to be our new node, so it'll be 78, and we our node next to be our temp. So we're just kind of inserting it in between. I'll show how that works in the next video, but this is just kind of a brief view to see how this works. And it's basically finding an actual index from the user 
and inserting data at that point. So it allows you the versatility to add data in the midst of the actual list as opposed to just adding it to the beginning and the end. That's basically it. And yes, I know that this is more of a complicated approach, but this is more of an overview and I don't want to dive too deep into the code here and kind of too much of an explanation when I want to do a different video on that. So we'll touch on that later. So for moving very, very similar, this can be removed from start. You verify the list is empty. So whenever we're moving, always make sure to check if you have an empty list before you do anything. Because if you do, if you try and delete anything, it's going to be a bad time and also a waste of time. So first things first, if our head is null order, that means we have no data in it. That means there's nothing to delete. So we just let the user know that and return. Now if it's not, then we need to adjust our length, adjust a uh, new instance of a node at the head, adjust our head to what it points to. So basically head needs to be, so let's just say we're doing to start. So we have 34, 56. So head is here. Now we want head to be set to this. And then we are going to delete the instance of head, also 56, just point the null. And that's it. Not too bad. Also, I mean, tail would be this as well, but I digress. So it was actually just set head to the next one after it, delete the original head, and you're good. Now, delete here is very, very important to actually delete the data at that location. Technically, yes, we could just adjust the pointer and it would technically work, but um, if you want to be more efficient, then deleting data that you're not using is going to be a much safer approach but do be careful when you start deleting things to make sure that you delete what you're intending to delete because dealing with dynamic memory in this case can be very very dangerous so just just practice caution that's all and then moving to the end this is more involved so again very first thing make sure it's not empty because if it is you're not deleting anything just return Next thing, adjust your length. And then if there is one element, set head and tail to null pointers and delete the original data. That is what we're doing here. So basically, it checks if head next is a null pointer, which means that the, the data after head is empty. Therefore, there's only one element. If that's true, then we're just going to essentially set head and tail to null pointers just like it was when the list was originally created. We delete that node and then return. That basically empties out the list. If it's not, then we are going to loop through the list. So this is going to be until our current next next is pointer. So let's just do, say, um, the 34, 56, 0. No. So if we delete the end, we are going to look until current, which is this, until two after it is null. If that happens, we're going to set current to current next, which is right here. And then we are going to essentially delete that data. Which leaves us with 34 point null, because we're going to set current next to null pointer and then we're going to adjust our tail appropriately as well. So again, I'm going to go into a more, I guess, better look at that, a little bit more granular approach to that in the next video, but this just kind of high scope, very simplistic approach to it. Remove that, very, very similar to insert at, and also just remove in general. So pre-processing, same thing. First thing, well, this is a little bit different pre-processing, but first we want to check, is our list empty? If it is, just kick out. There's no reason to do anything. Next check, make sure we're in the scope because if we're not going to delete something from the scope, we're gonna have a bad time. Then if we're index is zero, remove from start. If the index is a length, remove from end. So it's very, very similar pre-processing to insert at, but we also need to make sure that we maintain checking if the list is empty first. Then the actual removal is basically taking in the index value, make sure we reduce our length, get its current set to head, 
gonna loop through and eventually we are going to adjust our pointers appropriately so let's just say we want to do 34 is pointing to 42 is pointing to 56 is pointing to null and we want to remove at 1 we're going to loop through to 1 we found it we're going to delete it and we're going to adjust our pointers 34 point to 56 point to null so again very high level look I'll touch on it more in the next video to kind of show you grandly what's going on. But for now, let's take a look at display. Display, very, very, very simple. What we're doing is looping through all of our elements and printing them out as we go. Now this is a void function. If you want to actually return data from the list, obviously you would make this maybe an integer function and then return that data. So maybe you want to find a specific element in the list. Maybe you want to say, search 34 and it would loop through until it found 34 turn that to the user for display we're just printing out every element in the list so what we're doing is setting a current node at the head so let's just do 34 42 56 the classic so we're going to be head and tail and basically we are here that's where our current node is so while current is not equal to a null pointer, then we're going to print out current data. So current data is when you print out 34. Oops. And then current equals current next, which the next pointer is here. So whenever we print 42, so that's not a null pointer. So it's going to do this, adjust this, print 56, adjust this. Now our current is a null pointer, so we're done with this loop and then we'll just print out a new line for formatting. So I print out 34, 42, 56. Very, very simple. Again, you can use the same approach to find specific data, print out an index, and a lot of other things. So I just want to include this one to kind of show um, one that's more useful for dealing with the data as opposed to just inserting and removing it. So that's kind of what this one is for. Now, real quick, that is essentially the ins and outs of the basics of linked list again i'm going to have a more in-depth code video coming next it'll be up here in a card that you can be able to find or up here at the end of the video but i digress the whole point of this video is to kind of show how we interface with linked list what they're for why we care about them now obviously there are other data structures like stacks and queues and they are very very similar and actually you can just take a linked list and strip out some of the functionality and make your own stack and queue just like that it's actually kind of how i do my stacks and queues is just take my basic singly linked list and just kind of restrict it to a few variations but for a singly linked list is what my code is it is very extendable so if you want to do a search function you can do that if you want to do a display you can do that you want to do a sorting algorithm you can do that too so very extensive very versatile and honestly i think they're a really good introduction to user-defined abstract data structures but without further ado hope you guys learned something it's gonna be it for me i'll see you guys in the next video